Hey guys, D-Mike here for another episode of Luigi's Mansion. Last time we met Mr. Professor E. Gad, he hooked us up with the Poltergust 3000 so that we could go and capture some ghosts. So we're going to take a quick look around the mansion here. Last time we got a key that allowed us to explore a little bit more and we are going to get a little bit more in the weeds today. How about that? But first, the professor hitting us up with a little bit of info bombs. So this is basically just the game kind of giving you a heads up that you start out with kind of just your bog standard basic ghosts, the orange, the blue, the green, the pink. And this time we're actually gonna get into the ghosts with a little bit more personality. So there you go. Not too bad, though. We're gonna use the key! And get things going. Game starts to open up a little bit. Remember, there are 21 ghosts that we are responsible for putting back into their portraits. So we will definitely be doing that today. But first, money! Oh yeah. Make sure you collect as much money as you can if you want to vie for that best ending. And not that it counts towards anything, but you can suck up the little ghosts that are in the hallway here. Which is funny, there's like little bats and rats and stuff. You can, uh, you can gobble them up. It doesn't amount to anything, but it's fun, I guess. Practice your sucking skills if you're not good with that. So here is our first ghost of the day. I don't know if there's a different way to, like, differentiate between, like, named ghosts versus just kind of your generic ones, but these ones have... A family. We're gonna be taking down a ghost family today. In this room, we have a poltergeist who is shooting uh, books at us. And we did not come here to play school, so I don't know how I feel about that. But there you go. This is our first ghost of the day. His name is Neville. He's getting his wild thornberries on. Doesn't that look like the guy from Wild Thornberries, Nigel? Neville, very close name as well. So you gotta be careful in this room. The bookshelf will continue to spit out projectile books at you. But this is a little bit of an Easter egg. So if you go behind the, the desk and you peek around, you can collect this uh, golden mouse. And accidentally trigger Neville. This was not on purpose, but that's what you need to do. Um, if you look at him with the Game Boy Horror, you'll see that he has a little bit of a moment of um, where he's not paying attention, and that's when you can jump in and snag him with your flashlight. So that's kind of the that's the tell for him that he's going to be able to be captured. Each of the ghosts has a unique way of getting them to expose their heart. Would you expose your heart for me, viewers? I bet you would. But there you go. This shouldn't have taken two cycles, but it did. Thankfully, these rooms, though, what makes this situation a pretty good tutorial into catching named ghosts is they're all one and done. Once you take the ghost out, you are done. You get another key and you can move on to the next one. So not too bad. Once again, this is going to sound not like it's live commentary because it isn't. I'm pulling the curtain back and you're seeing the Wizard of Oz here in the making. But, um... Yeah, still trying to figure out my recording setup, having some difficulties in getting things to be the way that I want them to be. So this episode is going to be coming out a little bit later today that I'm actually record. I recorded the the video already, but this audio I'm doing later. Um, so it's coming out a little bit later today. So I apologize for a bit of the delay, but we'll get back into the swing of things. I didn't have any of these problems when I was doing Mario Galaxy 2. I mean, that's not true. I had a little bit of technical issues here and there, but not to the level that I have presently been dealing with, which is really annoying, but we will persevere here at DMIC Industries. We pride ourselves on coming up with alternative solutions to alternative problems. So no worries there. But yes, with our next key, we can pop down here into the hallway. This feels like we're breaking into someone's home, which kind of we are. I mean, Allegedly, we won the prize, so this is technically our home now. 
but we've got to rid it of all of these squatters, these ethereal ne'er do wells. So here we go, ghost number two for the day. This is Lydia. She's the mom of the family, and she's about to get herself into trouble. One of my favorite things, though, is that as Luigi is just hanging out in the mansion, he'll start humming the theme song to Luigi's Mansion, which I think is great. And sometimes the characters um, will do a little bit of harmony with the ghosts. They'll also sing the song. So I'll try to be quiet a little bit so you can hear it. I don't know if he'll do it again. Usually not while he's using the poltergust, but I used it a lot. I wanted to see if, if getting the fan going would turn into cash money. It did not. But there's cash money in the drawers. I feel like we're kind of robbing the place, but you know, whatever. Finders keepers. Wonderful. There you go. You can hear a little bit of them kind of going together. So that's kind of fun. That's a cute little addition that they made for the game. But yeah, we're going to interrupt her uh, her grooming session here. In this case, you pull back the curtains, literally, and uh, she's not about that. Once you do that, she uh, will pull them back and go back to her routine. But uh, what you're supposed to do is wait till she turns around and then blast her, but apparently I can't figure that out to save my life, so... Prepare yourselves, viewers. This is going to happen a lot as I try to fumble through figuring this game out. I will very quickly learn that I am not good at engaging the ghosts. That'd be a good name for, like, a rock band, Engage the Ghost. That'd be pretty fun, right? But yes. You know, a few tries. Never hurt anybody, right? We're all just having fun here after all. Why not? This game is so fun. Why not take your time and enjoy it? It's not a long game. Also, it is a pretty linear game. So that's one of the reasons why some of these episodes going forward may be shorter. I'm trying to not really blast through the game. I want to make it last, you know, savor it. Savor the sucking. Because that's all we've got. But yeah, taking out Lydia. We uh, took our pearl necklace. It's nice, you know, after a good suck and sometimes you do get a pearl necklace. So there it is. Very good. So now that we have that key, we can go and visit the baby. You can see Toad just kind of hanging out on the balcony by himself. Mario, where are you? And there you go, viewers. The panicked cry of Chauncey the ghost, the baby. I don't know all of their names, but uh, I know these ones because this is not the first time I've recorded this. So bear with me here or don't. But yes, we are going to do great. This is a pretty interesting and clever boss fight, I would say. You could consider all of the ghosts that you're trying to capture a bit of a boss fight because they're not your regular enemies, but I don't know, however you want to view it. Also, if you're low on hearts, that uh, chest of drawers right to the side of the door, that'll give you a almost full heal. So if you need that, jump in there. In previous recordings I did because I kept running into stuff and having trouble not dying. So for a game that's so easy, I definitely make it not look like it is. But there you go. Luigi humming to himself to keep his composure. So we'll go ahead and um, rock this horse and see what happens. Doesn't seem like Chauncey appreciates that very much. He's got some words for us. Very strange though that a baby with a binky is uh, able to speak. But maybe because it's a ghost, there's a little bit of telepathy involved. So this is just kind of the setup for the eventual fight. This is not the fight itself. Chauncey's gonna toss his teddy bears at us. Named after Teddy Roosevelt, the pre one of the former presidents of the US and A. So we'll go ahead and suck up his beach ball and blast him right in the face as you do with kids. Sometimes if they're being bad, just get your vacuum mounted and shoot him in the face with a beach ball. That always helps. 
So there we go. Chauncey has had enough, and he wants us to grow smaller, which... I'm not sure exactly how that works, but we'll just take his word for it. And he has teleported us inside his crib. No, this is good. This is good set design. And they do this a few times throughout the course of this game based on what I remember. So that's fun. Yes. Get a get a feeling here that Chauncey is not enjoying our company. I remember this kind of weirded me out when I was younger watching this. Yeah, this uh <laughs> This shot of him screaming is a little spoopy. But here we go. Boss fight against Chauncey, the first boss of the game. Pretty easy, all things considered. And he only has two different types of attacks. He's got that rocking horse, which he'll send to you just in uh, one straight line. So not really too tough to evolve, to avoid, not evolve. Um, but here, the beach ball attack. This is going to be where you're doing your damages. So same way as before, suck up the beach ball and then give him the old bonk. Oop. There you go. And make sure you point your poltergeist at Chauncey. <laughs> if you want to be able to actually do any damage and wear him down. One of the things you have to be mindful of is that with some of the younger, not younger, easier ghosts, you can potentially one or two cycle them. You probably could two cycle Chauncey as well if you're any good at this game, unlike me. But um, in general, yeah, the tougher ghosts, the, the premier boss ghosts, those are the ones that are going to take a little bit more... Again, they're a little more durable, so which I'm not sure how that works exactly and why it's tougher to take down a baby ghost than his mom and his dad. Couldn't tell you, but that's kind of the the way of the road here. Wait for the wait for the balls, suck on the balls and then shoot them right at the baby's face and blammo. There you go. That's it. Pretty easy. It's pretty telegraphed for a first fight, but they've done a good job in you know, maybe the game wants you to do it in three cycles, like the rule of thirds for Nintendo. But yeah, this is a really fun game. Once you get the hang of it, that's one of the things that makes me a little sad that it kind of fell off as a bit of a black sheep in the Nintendo catalog, especially for the GameCube. This was a, I believe it was a GameCube premiere release. It came out around the same time as the GameCube itself but it wasn't really a huge deal. And then they tried to do a sequel for the 3DS, I think, Dark Moon. I believe that's what it was called. I don't remember that one doing well. And then the most recent version, uh, Luigi's Mansion 3 for the Switch. I played that one, I played that one actually before I played this one. That was my first foray into the Luigi's Mansion franchise. And I, I don't know, it was okay, but I didn't love it, so. But this one so far, I am I am loving it. It's a lot of fun. It's a good uh, good Tilly with the afterlife. But there it is, first boss done. Not too bad, right? V for victory and a big old chest. If you suck well, you get a big old chest. Let's yeah. see what we got. The big key. So the game is broken down into areas. This was the completion of area one so there you go and somehow we're having like reception issues getting a hold of egad maybe if he moved out of his parents basement or in this case luigi's basement he wouldn't have any <laughs> suga suga he wouldn't have too many problems but that's not our problem he's been helping us out though so we'll we'll extend his lease a little bit but he needs to mind his p's and q's we're gonna send ourselves back to the lab, which is convenient that it just will teleport you there and we can deposit our goodies. Very nice. Okay, we showed that bo that boss goes who's boss. Well done, game. Okay, so listen to this music real quick. Does this not sound like the coffee shop from Animal Crossing, like with blathers? 100%. Although, Animal Crossing does predate this, although I don't know if there was a coffee shop in the original Animal Crossing that came out for the 64, which was ported 
to the GameCube for the US today. That's the first taste we got. I believe it was called Animal Forest for the 64. We never got that one. We got kind of like the enhanced port. It's basically the, the Pokemon Blue of Animal Crossings. And even that sound of the machine that was processing the ghost, it kind of sounded like in uh, Twilight Princess when Link is turning into Wolf Link spoilers. But there you go. So three ghosts, three portraits, 18 to go. I don't know if they're as uh, linear as these first three are. I'm assuming they're probably none and there's more gimmicks involved, but there you go. So we did it, viewers. Excellent work. We've caught area one. So there, there we go. Neville, Lydia, and Chauncey in the bag. Pretty good. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. This game is definitely much more fun once you get the hang of it and you're not quite so stupid like I am. And then after every time that you complete an area, it gives you a breakdown of the money you've got, which it'll tally it at the end and it'll tell you what type of special ending you got. So I don't know if five, almost $5 million renews is anything good or not, but I felt pretty good. And uh, no, savings for chumps, but there you go. So we're going to head back to the mansion and uh, continue on to area two. And uh, yeah, for some reason, it gives you this animation of Egad waving goodbye. It's dumb. But anyway, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D-Mike. This has been Luigi's Mansion, and I'll see you next time. Bye.